Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Hello and welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Science Fiction Podcast. Now last week I promised you all that I would not be talking about something that I hated and would actually give you guys something that I like. So today we're going to be mostly talking about things that I like. So just to give you a little bit of a list, we have Westworld, which is coming to HBO pretty soon, Jumanji 2, Transformers 5, and I have a special treat for you guys if we have time to talk about it. (laughs) We may not. I have a lot to say. So first thing that's coming up, there's an up-and-coming science fiction thriller television series created by Jonathan Nolan. Yes, that's Christopher Nolan's brother on HBO. So I am definitely going to have to get myself HBO because this is really exciting. Now, this is based on the old 1973 film of the same name. The original film had Yul Brenner in it, and and it's actually kind of rad. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. So some of the names that are attached to it are... um, uh, J.J. Abrams is a producer, Brian Burke is a producer, and Nolan is directing the plots. So it's scheduled to pre- premiere on October 2nd, 2016, and it's pretty exciting. So the way that Westworld is set up is, so there's this world that's created as kind of like a theme park, right? Right. And so um, it's set up in a way where like, the robots are just there for the pleasure of the people. So the people can come and like, you know, have a gunfight with the gunfighters or go in and sleep with the uh, like prostitutes and the brothels and go and have a have a drink with, you know, in the old Western time fashion. Right. But there are robots that they make and they're, you know, um, they're forced to do this and they don't really have a life. And so in the trailer, it actually shows one of the female robots um, kind of learning that she is a robot and not a person because they think that it's, you know, real life. And so what Yul Brynner's character would have been in the original Westworld looks like he's going to, just by the trailer, guide her and show her, like, look, this is how we can escape this. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting. Like, I, I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with this, especially because I loved the uh, 1973 film. Uh, I don't know. Did you see the trailer, Pauline? What did you think? I did. And I've been actually anticipating... I I wasn't familiar with Westworld before, but I watched the original trailer, which made me want to watch the original movie and also read the novel because it's based off a book. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. And um, so it's going to be on HBO, which I'm really excited about because I really do like HBO um, like series. I like a lot of their shows, Um, but I am pretty excited to see how it's going to be and because it's a 10 part series so it's kind of it's not too long of a show you know but it's going to be longer than a movie which is kind of nice but i am excited to see how they're going to blend like that fantasy world with the reality world and i i think i know what may happen but i don't know like the storyline at all you know because i haven't seen the original so i don't want to like say something and sound completely dumb (laughs) right well, you know, and, and what's exciting about it, too, is, well, for one thing, Jonathan Nolan does a pretty good job. Um, you know, if you're not familiar with Jonathan Nolan, he is Christopher Nolan's brother. And, and mm-hmm. Jonathan Nolan pretty much writes all of Christopher Nolan's movies. So, like, Interstellar was written by him. Batman the Dark Knight, it was written by him. Memento, which, I mean, if you haven't seen Memento, you should go watch Memento because Memento is a really well-written movie. It's not really my cup of tea, per se, but I can really appreciate it for its storytelling aspect. Um So I'm really excited about this. Like, if you would have told me that Westworld was being remade, I would have, like, cringed originally. But the fact that I've heard that it's Jonathan Nolan and it's being produced by HBO makes me kind of really excited for it. Because if you guys know anything about HBO, and I'm pretty sure you do, they have been releasing really, really good content lately. Um, They just had that series. What's that show that you like? The the, uh, Yes, The Night Of. The Night Of. Mm -hmm. They have that show, The Night Of, which is supposed to be um, tremendous. And, of course, there's Game of Thrones, which, I mean, we all know Game of Thrones is, like, the best thing on the planet, right? Right. So, I mean, Game of Thrones is really good. 
Now, now, um, the in the original 1973 film, it, it, it and I'm just going to talk about it a little bit because like we don't really know too much about what's going to happen in Westworld, and, and I'm really excited for the show. I'm really excited to to see it when it comes out in uh, October 2nd, and I think you guys will all be be stoked to to check it out too because it looks like it's going to be this kind of thing where it's talking about like artificial consciousness and that sort of thing. Well, mm-hmm. in the actual original story. There are three different worlds that are going on at the same time. So there's West World, Roman World, and Medieval World. And so you can go to those worlds and interact just like um, in the new show, like I, I mentioned before. But things start to go haywire, right? And so like the creatures are actually like 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 if you were like seeing a rattlesnake, the rattlesnake would actually bite, bite you. Bite you. Or like, you know, if you're the you gunfighter. shot. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the big things about the original uh, movie, The West World, was Yul Brenner, who was in Magnificent Seven and the second Sabata movie, among other amazing Western films. Um, Yul Brenner is one of those actors who I, I really enjoy. Um, if you enjoy the Western genre, you've definitely seen him before. He's a really good char- character um, to, to, to watch on screen. If you're into that sort of thing, I know Westerns really aren't super popular right now as far as um, that sort of thing goes. But. Um, so Yul Brenner plays the gunfighter and he's the gunfighter robot and, and like so the world's going rogue and so before you you go in the gunfight with a guy and you always won kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Well one of the guys gets shot and so he's going around like killing people while the worlds go haywire. It's like it's kinda like Jurassic Park but with robots. Mm-hmm. But they look just like people, they act just like people, you know, that sort of thing. So it looks like this is going to be like kind of in the same realm as the book and the movie. But with a different twist on it, like it seems like instead of the robots just being these mindless killers, like I think they were in the um, original film, it looks like there's going to be a bit of like consciousness and awareness and a sort of a a modern spin on it, like a, a very intelligent modern spin, kind of like um, we have saw with. If you guys remember uh, Ex Machina and that sort of thing, like it, it kind of like I'm getting the Ex Machina type feeling on a larger scale from this movie. It's really exciting. So if you like Westerns and you like science fiction and you like robots and you like HBO, I'd say check it out. Like I, I'm, I have very high hopes for this show. I don't have any, any quarrel with this at all. So this is exciting. So speaking of blasts from the past, so to speak, it seems as though they're making another Jumanji movie. Which I'm actually really <laughs> excited about. So before you pick up your pitchforks and torches, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, right. hear us out about this because this might actually be a little bit cooler than you think. Right. And so, well, the first thing that I like about it is that it's actually a sequel. It's not a remake. Yes. So that already makes me happy because I don't think you can redo Jumanji and some things I just don't think that you should just redo. I think you can you should either let them just be great or add a sequel and so (laughs) you know and so i am really excited and um so so far we don't really quite know what the like storyline is going to be like i don't know uh all we know right now as of right now is that the rock is going to be in it dwayne johnson kevin hart jack black and nick jonas are the male see that's exciting and it, it sounds like it's almost going to be a comedy. Like they're right. almost making fun of the original Jumanji. That's what I'm wondering. And I don't know if these one of these guys, maybe Kevin Hart, is like one of the kids from the original, like grown up. Right. Or something like that. Um, and then there's also going to be Karen Gillen, who's going to be in it. And so I'm pretty excited. I, I don't know like if she's going to be the girl in it. I don't know. Um, I'm actually very excited to see how they're going to make this a sequel and but we don't really know well, what like the story especially is since be. the original one came out in 1995 like yeah it's been a minute it's been a minute since it's been the a while. Last, it's been, you know what like like 20 something years mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. since the last one and this one's coming out what in 2017 yeah it's scheduled to be released on uh july 28th in 2017 oh, exciting so kind of soon well like a year yeah but i mean it's worth it the flies wait. by yeah because i mean i feel like summer's over so next summer it'll right, be out right um and so I am excited about it because, like I said, it was one of the first movies that scared me when I was young. And I remember my mom wanted to buy us the Jumanji game, like the board game. Right. And we told her no because we were really afraid that somehow, some way, this would come to pass 
and my little brother would turn to a monkey brother and then it would just be all all bad so i'm not quite sure what's but i i am excited for it i'm very excited i hope it's not too too much of a comedy you know yeah i hope it's a little well because i mean the original one was a little silly like it wasn't a full-blown comedy i mean it had robin williams and Mm -hmm. you know rest in peace but uh yeah no it wasn't really exactly a comedy per se but you know i think it's interesting because this is kind of coming out at an interesting time where a lot of the people who kind of grew up and were kids around Mm -hmm. the time when this movie came out are maybe possibly having kids right now so this is something you can kind of like enjoy and pass on to your um your kids i know Many like memes. with a lot of a lot of movies especially oriented towards kids it seems like a lot of movies try to kind of play off of the appearance nostalgia okay yes i agree Have i you think that? a lot of it is us wanting to go see it yeah <laughs> so we've i've been think, waiting for it or well you know. i think part of it is like if kids are going to want to go see movies no matter what like right. it doesn't matter to the kid but if you can get the adult it's actually kind of then fun you get for the us. kid well yeah. it's uh, like a marketing strategy you mm-hmm. know what i mean mm-hmm. but like with the rock and and jack black it seems like this might be a little bit more adult than Edgy, yeah yeah i'm kind of looking forward to it yeah, and i like jack black so i'm i'm interested i don't really follow too much about nick jonas i don't know is this his I don't know if he's been in a movie before. Actually. He's been in a few. Oh, he's been in yeah, a few. See, I don't know. The thing with Jack Black and and um, I'm mm-hmm. going to get up on my soapbox a little bit here. I'm ready Jack for it. Jack Black is great when other people are writing for Jack Black. Okay. If Jack Black is usually involved in the story somehow, yeah, it's not always so good. You know, right. like early Jack Black was great. I just, you know, like, I really like the guy and I think he's funny and like Tenacious D, especially the show that was on HBO, um, back in the day, this, he's a funny dude, but like, I feel like sometimes he gets a little too ahead of himself and I feel like sometimes he gets a little bit full of himself. So mm-hmm. stepping off my Jack Black <laughs> soapbox, I really like the guy and I'm hoping this will be funny, but I'm, I'm also hoping that this isn't going to be another goosebumps. Oh yeah. 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 And I don't want it to be... I'm interested to how they're going to do like the graphics, you know, because sometimes I think some things can be too much graphics. Well, and I think some things are allowed to be a little bit cheap on the cheesy side. Like mm-hmm. I feel like with Jumanji, I give it a little bit more leeway as far as like cheesy CGI and that sort of thing, because again, it is more for children. Right. Um, but the original Jumanji used actual animals. So that's like, what I'm saying. Why so don't, I'm kind I hope of they hoping do that. they stick along. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Uh, that it's They don't have too much fake things. Yeah, yeah. Like things that they well, could exactly. actually use. And it looks like we are coming up on a break. Mm-hmm. So I hope you guys liked hearing about Jumanji. And hopefully uh, you'd want to see it too. Like It's actually something that is a little bit exciting for both me and Pauline. Right. So we're going to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to you guys about Transformers 5. Hooray. <laughs> top five, top five, top five. <laughs> okay. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And we are back. So there's a little bit of news for the new Transformers movie. Michael Bay is directing it. And I remember at one point, you know, there was, we, they were talking about it. And at one point, Michael Bay said that he was going to pass it off to somebody else. But I guess not. So we have a little bit of news on uh, Transformers 5 for you. And um, I'm going to hand, hand that over to you, Polly. So tra- <laughs> Transformers 5 is coming out. Which, Okay. I saw the first one. I liked the first one. Yeah. You know what? I actually like the first one myself. But I didn't even realize that there we're on number five. Yeah. I've yeah, seen, there's, there's been five of them. I've seen bits and pieces of the others. And 
mostly because I mean I liked the first one, but I was just like, eh, okay, like whatever. Um, but I saw bits and pieces, like I said, of the others. Now we're on to number five, and actually number five is going to be um, kind of I'm not sure how they're going to do this because typically it's more of like a modern era like setting in the movies but this one has to do with king arthur yeah so there's somebody and literally merlin. in the cast and they've already hired they, they've confirmed merlin and king arthur being in this movie yes. and they actually like hired an actor who has played king arthur before yeah liam um garrigan yeah yeah he that was guy. In once upon a time oh so boy. oh joy we'll know <laughs> if you watch that then you'll recognize him he's gonna be playing that that character in and so we're not sure yet. There hasn't been, like, is it just going to be, is that the whole setting of the movie? Is it just part of it? I don't know. And they're like, hyping it up. I feel like they might be incorporating time travel into this a little bit. Right. Which, you know. Which is kind of cool, but then. I don't know. Like, time travel is one of those things where you have to follow your, like, if you have set rules for time travel and you're mm-hmm. following, like, the actual theories of time travel, you have to follow your own rules. Unless you're Doctor Who and then you're allowed to do whatever you want. <laughs> but, like, it really bothers me in movies. Like, even 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 Men in Black 3, which I really liked Men in Black 3, yes. does not follow its own time travel rules. And that can be a little bit annoying, especially if you're a fan of time travel films. I don't know. I it, it, a lot of people bring in too much logic, but for the Transformers movies, the first one was okay. It was not bad. I enjoyed it, you know, for what it was. Um, you know, a lot of people are kind of mad at the whole Transformers series because they're like, "Oh, it's not like the original show and all right. that." Well, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but the original show was a little bit cheesy, and it was made to sell a toy. So mm-hmm. it's just like when we get upset about our turtles, which I get a little bit more upset than with Transformers on what happened to the turtles. But I digress. <laughs> um, so the Transformers movies, there was the first one, the second one, which is complete garbage. Like the second movie is like held up as like one of the worst. It's a bad movie, but it has, like, I mean, like even to the point to where like some of the robots are a little bit racist, but I won't get into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit racist. Not quite sure how a car can really be a race but you know yeah well they they like really to play picked like um like oh like some pretty bad stereotypes yes for, you know and they're the, just robots yeah and, and people got really upset and it's it's just kind of a bad plot and but the, you know the third one wasn't terrible like it, it's definitely too long and um you know marky mark is in this in in that one and and he didn't do such a bad job i think marky mark is in number four as well which Four was they when they when four came out, okay. So when they announced four, mm-hmm. they made it the Dinobots the movie. Like the, all of their advertisement was, man, the Dinobots are in this. You better be excited because they're all here, and you're gonna love it because Dinobots. I feel like there was only like. 15, 20 minutes of the actual Dinobots, and mm-hmm. they didn't say or do anything like, like. You know, and, and, and like the Dinobots were kind of cheesy in the show, but they were kind of cool at the same time. Um, but, you know, so that was disappointing to the fans. And that movie is like really long with like three different plots going on. Right. So I'm not super excited about number five. We'll see what happens with it. You know, I'm not a really big fan of Michael Bay myself. Like he's put his little fingers into a lot of things that I think are kind of like he put his fingers in a lot of remakes for horror movies that I mm-hmm. enjoy before he put his fingers in them and then made garbage (laughs) movies out of them and like it feels like everything that i love michael bay has to go and try to ruin in some way like when i heard he was doing a ninja turtles movie i was just like well he just produced it but i was really really upset and then i went and saw it and i was like oh my right god to be fair, the Ninja Turtles has always kind of been a little cheesy in of itself, but, you know, I'm not going to get into that. Um, but, yep, new Transformers movie. Looks like Marky Mark is back, and I know Marky Mark doesn't like to be called Marky Mark, but he doesn't know where I live, so. Um, He'll always be Marky Mark. Yeah, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, right? Like, <laughs> but he's been doing some good things lately, and mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see where this goes. We'll see how much longer they can stretch out this series into infinity because it seems like they just I keep know. making them and making them and making them. Is anybody them. really into it? Still? I don't know. Like, I have a lot of friends that, like, don't 
like the movies and we always criticize the movies, but then they go out and watch it twice. They watch them twice in theaters and then buy the Blu-ray and then buy the toys. And I'm right. like, but I thought you didn't like the Transformers movies. And they're like, yeah, but they get on that hype train. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. So. I guess know. it's fun for like little kids. Well, and it's fun for adults too, especially if you grew up with the series and you know, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with the Transformer series besides maybe epi- number two. Like, like, don't even get me started about number two. Number two is so bad. But, like, <laughs> there's nothing inherently so wrong about them. Like, their existence isn't a blight on society, and I don't think that it's a cancer. Like, I feel like the Transformers movies are there, and they're a good time if you want to, like, tune out and have a beer and enjoy a movie, you mm-hmm. know? It's not Blade Runner. It's not, you know, it's not Star Wars. It's not, you know, so I I give it a little bit of a pass as far as um, that goes. And I don't mind that they keep making them. So, so I don't know. I'm not too excited about the movie. Are are you excited about the movie? They haven't really released a whole lot of information. I mean, I probably won't see it. Right. I might see bits and pieces of it. <laughs> I'm not going to go to see it. Yeah, no, me neither. That's for sure. Unless, I mean, unless somebody takes me. But even then, I might be like, eh. But well, I really did enjoy the first one. That's the thing. I did enjoy the first one. I thought I it was a lot the of fun. the first one came out at like a really good time for that kind of thing, you know? Like, yeah. I feel like the first one was definitely a spectacle, especially at the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm. I think we're all kind of tired of it. Like, we're, we're all kind of tired of all the explosions and we're kind of tired right. of not being able to understand what's going on on the screen because i know that's a big complaint with the transformers movies is like what are they actually doing right because you can't really tell you know like it, the fight scenes are so discombobulated that mm-hmm. like it gives people motion sickness and i think people are kind of tired of that which is good because you should be tired of that because we deserve better anyway <laughs> after this break we're going to talk to you guys about blade runner 2 so stick around Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So again, before you pull out your pitchforks and torches, hear this out. Because Blade Runner fans, like myself, when we first heard that they were doing another Blade Runner, we were kind of a little bit scared. So when we heard that they were doing Blade Runner, my first thought was, oh no, they're not going to try to remake that, are they? Turns out they're not. So this is going to be like a sequel to the one that came out in 1982, which, I mean, it's been a while, but we'll see what happens. So, so, um, so Ridley Scott and his brother had mentioned that they wanted to do something with uh, Blade Runner in 2009, and they announced that they wanted to do a web series called Purefold, set before the actual movie. Well, that didn't end up happening. So he actually ended up committing to producing and directing a full-length film of Blade Runner in 2011. Well, it's been handed off to a few people, and um, a couple writers and stuff have been on it, and it looks like... So Dennis Villanueva... I'm the director of Prisoners 2013 and Sicario 2015, both critically acclaimed films. If you have not seen Prisoners and Sicario, and I know I've said this before about Sicario, go watch it. Sicario is, is it, it's amazing. They took a, like, there's a scene in Sicario where it's like a five minute, 10 minute car ride, and they're just driving, and it's so intense. There's no chase, there's no gunfight, just driving, and it's intense. It's great, great movie. So Villanueva is um, on it. And he's going to be directing the film. And um, so joining him is Roger Deakins, who um, 
was the cinema cinematographer on Sicario and Prisoners and and he is a really good cinematographer. He also um did No Country for Old Men. And so they're collaborating together to do the new Blade Runner. And I have to say if I was going to be giving anyone Blade Runner, it would probably be this guy. And and that's an exciting it's an exciting thing. So uh, one of the things that they actually asked him is, so is Richard Deckard really a robot? And he's like, well, of course. We've known that since 1982, guys. <laughs> So I kind of want to talk a little bit about the original Blade Runner, uh, just a little bit, because there's not too much that we know about the new Blade Runner movie. We know that it's supposed to be coming out next year. We will see. Hopefully it does. I'm crossing my fingers and I hope that they don't ruin it. Like, I really hope that they don't ruin it. So Blade Runner is based on a book called Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep is a lot different than Blade Runner in a lot of ways, but it's also a lot the same. So the main character, Richard Deckard's the same and the basic plot happens. But it's set in a more dystopian society. Mm-hmm. Like, it's set in a much more industrial and run down kind of world than in Blade Runner. Blade Runner is kind of set up in this world that is very colorful. Like, it's, 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 um, it, so it takes place in Los Angeles, I believe. In the book, there's like this whole hierarchy of like, if you own an animal, you're technically like a higher class citizen. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's like a war that goes on. And the world is kind of irradiated and animals have become rare. Most of the rich people have moved off to other colonies. And in on Earth, if you own an animal, that's a symbol of status. So like the main character owns a sheep that he's really attached to and right. that sort of thing. And, and in, the, in the movie, they kind of bring it up a little bit. But in the movie, Harrison Ford does not have a wife in the book. The character Richard Deckard does. The book brings up a lot of conflicts about, okay, so is it okay to kill these uh, replicants? Is it not okay to kill the replicants? Because they're they're kind of like humans, except they don't have empathy. You know, and you can't tell unless you go down to like the straight up bone marrow if they're a replicant. And so there's a lot of situations that he gets in where he's like, okay, am I a replicant? And in the movie, they kind of make it kind of a big question as well of is Harrison Ford a replicant? And so um, I kind of want to break it down just a little bit. There are three different versions of the film. So if you have not seen the film, I highly recommend going and finding the final cut. That is the best version of the film that you can find. It is the most complete version of the film that you can find. And it's the version that Ridley Scott originally wanted. So check that out. So the three different versions, there's a theatrical cut, the video release, and the final cut. And so with the theatrical cut of the film, what you're getting is, and it's on Netflix. So if, if you find Blade Runner on Netflix, unless you're intentionally trying to watch the theatrical version, do not watch it. They, they might have taken it down. Hopefully, because it's the wrong version that they should have up there. In the theatrical version, Richard Deckard, um, Harrison Ford, has voiceovers, right? Right. So it, it really slows down the film and kind of ruins things. Mm-hmm. Like, legitimately, at the end of the movie, when he rides off into the sunset, like, he literally rides off into the sunset. And so the whole <laughs> tone of the movie is supposed to be bleak and dark and grim. And then at the end of the movie, he rides off into the sunset with a girl. Not only is that terrible, but what he says ruins the entire movie so the whole point is that you know you have his buddy who at the end is like nobody lives forever man right and and that's (laughs) supposed to be the point is like enjoy your time while you have it like that's the point of the ridley scott version enjoy your time while you have it the book is a little bit different on its message i think but that's the message of the movie and so it's like yeah enjoy her while you have her and then they're riding off into the sunset and harrison ford is like but what he didn't tell me was that she had an unlimited lifespan. And it's like, <laughs> are you kidding me? That ruins the whole point of the movie. <laughs> He's not supposed to get away happy at the end. He's, it's supposed to be you have to enjoy the time you have on, on Earth. You, like He just needs to enjoy her while she lasts. And the whole idea like, oh, she has an unlimited lifespan. Like That just ruins the whole it ruins the whole thing, guys. Like, what a terrible way to end the movie. And and the narrations are just, they're not great. Like, usually I like it when there's the kind of the noir feeling in the movie mm-hmm. and they're kind of like explaining things. But in this particular film, it does not work. Um, now, in the video release, they realized that it didn't work. So they cut out all of those spots. So, like, they just cut the voiceovers, but they left the edit. So, like, there are these really long and awkward pauses where there should be voiceover that they didn't add the voiceover 
And that's probably the version you've seen if you've watched the movie, like especially because that's the version they usually play on TV. And that's the version that uh, you would get if you had it on VHS. Now, the final cut edition, and I don't remember exactly when the final cut came out, but the final cut, they chopped all that down. So it's a little bit better pace, a little bit better pacing, less bore, a little bit less boring for those of you who thought it was boring, which it, it's not. And then there's something really important that was added in. And I'm not sure if this was in the video version, but I know it's in the final cut. So at one point, he has this dream of a unicorn. And okay. it seems it doesn't seem super out of place. Like, you know, you hear, oh, yeah, there's a dream about a unicorn. That's kind of odd. It's not super out of face in the way it's shot and everything. And, and some people think it's stupid. And, and here's why you're wrong, if you think it's stupid. <laughs> so... The, he has a dream about a unicorn and it's like a brief like like three seconds four seconds of he just like sees a unicorn running and it's in the same bleak tone and everything and he wakes up well at the end of the movie his buddy the same one that goes nobody lives forever right he lays an origami piece of a unicorn in front of him at one point and how would he know that the idea is how would he know what his dreams were Unless Richard Deckard was a robot, unless Richard Decker was a replicant, because none of the memories and none of the thoughts that a, like none of the memories of the replicants are original. Mm -hmm. They give the replicants memories artificially from other people. So that way they kind of have a past and a bit of a personality. So and they make them seem more human because Nexus six is just trying to make more human like robots. Um, and that's what the Nexus 6 model is, the Nexus company. And so there's like that whole idea that, yes, Richard Deckard is a robot. Now, Harrison Ford himself has come out and said in the past, no, Richard Deckard's not a robot. And in his mind, he's not. And I kind of like that a little bit better than the idea that Richard Deckard is a robot, just in my personal opinion. But as far as Ridley Scott goes, the unicorn represents R Richard Deckard being a replicant himself and going out and killing his own people, if you think about it. So it's really kind of an interesting dynamic. And, and, and it's one of those really cerebral films. And the book is really cerebral, too. Like, if, mm -hmm. you, if you haven't read the book, I highly recommend it. Like, it's a short read. You could read it probably in a couple days. It's really small, really good. The movie is really good. Highly recommended. I am excited for the sequel. We'll see where it goes. And it looks like that is about all of the time we have for today. So where can they find us, Colleen? You can always find us on our network website, gsmcpodcast.com. You can also listen to us on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Because we're everywhere. Alrighty, and that's the end of the show. Stay soft.